Hi everyone, my name is Jen, I'm an author and a book reviewer and I thought I would start a new reading vlog today. I have been thinking recently about most anticipated releases and wondering how good I am at predicting books that I'm going to love. I tend to make a most anticipated releases video twice a year because publisher catalogues tend to come out six months in advance so I'll normally make a video at the end of the year about January to June time and then I'll make one the following summer covering the summer and autumn slash winter titles for that year too. I have gone back through my channel and found all of my most anticipated books videos and I've just gone through all the books that I talked about and tried to work out how many I have read, how many I've ended up loving and how many I didn't like. I actually haven't done the stats. Maybe I'll do actual numbers later. I've got lists of titles here which I'm going to talk to you about but maybe at the end of this video um, because I'm going to read some more in this vlog I can come back to you with numbers as to how many I didn't end up reading at all either because I haven't got round to them yet or because I decided I'm actually not that interested in them. How many I read and enjoyed and how many I read and I didn't like. I think most anticipated releases videos are different to five star predictions a little bit, they're very similar, but five star predictions can include books that you've had on your shelf for a really long time and you've probably heard other people reviewing them, maybe people you know have similar tastes to you, have loved it and that's why you're excited to get to it. Whereas most anticipated books are books that no one has reviewed yet. No one has read, no one has talked about it. So you have very little to go on. So it's probably not surprising, getting to this list that I've got in my notebook, that my hit rate for loving the books on those lists is not that high. Unsurprisingly, the books that I have the most success with from my most anticipated books videos are books by authors that I have read and loved before. That makes sense because I have something else to go on. There are a surprising number of books that I didn't recognise from my really old videos because I've gone back to 2015. Some books I just didn't recognise the titles of. Clearly I'd seen them in a publisher catalogue and thought, oh maybe I'll get round to purchasing that or requesting it for review and then I just didn't. Maybe because it got lukewarm reviews by other people or maybe I just decided it wasn't as interesting as I first thought, I don't know. So let me talk you through a few titles and I will insert some, not footage here of me talking, but I'll just insert some footage with the sound turned off so you can see me in years gone by talking about books. So in 2015, in my most anticipated releases video, I said that I thought I would love The Grace Keepers by Kirsty Logan. This made me giggle because I had actually read a book by Kirsty before. I'd read The Rental Heart and Other Stories, which is a short story collection, her debut that was published by Salt. So I did know that I liked her writing, but this was the first novel of hers to come out and um, I didn't know her then and we're friends now. So it's fun to look back on that and see me who didn't know her at all saying, I think I'm gonna love this book about a girl called North and her bear who live on this floating circus. And I was correct, I really did like that book. One I was incorrect about in that video was Kazu Ishiguro's The Buried Giant. I read that only last year. It was sitting on my TBR shelf for so long because when it came out, it was getting such mixed reviews that I put it off and put it off and put it off. And when I got round to reading it, I really didn't enjoy it at all. And then one book that I haven't read but own. So we're talking, well, eight years ago, eight years this book has been sitting on my shelf, is Almost Famous Women by Megan Mayhew Bergman. And um, yeah, maybe that's one of the books that I should get round to reading in this video. Essentially what I wanna do is talk you through these past videos and then we're gonna go into a reading vlog where I read some of the titles I haven't got to yet and then we can draw more conclusions at the end about how successful the books I ended up reading in this video ended up being. And as usual with all of my reading vlogs, I will insert you know, chatty segments and I'll take you on some walks and we'll cook some food and all of that good stuff. All right, 2016. In 2016, I had a great success rate with the books I predicted I was gonna love. So I loved Christmas Days by Jeanette Winterson. That came out in 2016. It's not surprising that I loved that though because I'd already read 
pretty much all of her backlist. So does that count? It does count, but I guess it's not that exciting is what I mean. Whereas I read and loved The Invention of Angela Carter by Edmund Gordon, who was an author I'd read nothing by before. So this was a great success. I did have an inkling that I would be attracted to the subject matter because I'd read and liked books by Angela Carter before and she's an intriguing person, but that still doesn't mean I was definitely going to like it. So that one was a big tick. 2016 was a successful anticipated releases video. 2017, I said I would love Winter by Ali Smith, which of course I did because I love Ali Smith again, not that exciting. A book I was very wrong about was How To Be Human by Paula Kokosa. It's a fair few years since I've read that one, but I remember really not enjoying it. And then Fever Dream by Shamanta Schweblin was on my most anticipated releases video. And I still haven't read anything by her. I think maybe again, because she gets quite mixed reviews from people, but one of these days, I should read a book that she's written. In 2018, I predicted that I would love The Gloaming by Kirsty Logan. Again, an author at that point I'd already read before. However, I was very wrong about another author who had a new book out and that was Emma Healy. That year, Whistle in the Dark came out and I'd loved her book, Elizabeth is Missing, but this one, I really, really, really didn't like. Um, and then again, a book I didn't get around to reading, which has surprised me looking back on it and seeing how long ago this was, Brother is, uh, Brother? Brother in Ice by Alicia Knopf. And I have this sitting on my shelf. Every winter I look at it and think, Ice, winter, I should be reading this. And I haven't read it yet. So maybe one that we'll get to in this video. In 2019, I had so many books on my most anticipated releases video, it's kind of ridiculous. But I love The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker, Lanny by Max Porter, Spring by Ali Smith, in the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. All of those are books by authors that I had already read from and loved before. Speaking of Summer was a book that I really didn't like, but I was definitely heavily influenced by the cover. Um, I reviewed it a couple of years ago, I think, and it has this twist in it, which was really frustrating and something that is overused in crime books and I won't spoil it for you, but one of those instances where you want to throw a book across the room, you know? I also didn't end up enjoying Starless Sea by Erin Morganson or Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. I did a Are These Books Worth the Hype reading vlog that year where I talked about both of those and I'll link that in the description box down below. I ended up not picking up The Heavens by Sandra Newman at all because I think I heard mixed reviews. I haven't read Black Leopard Red Wolf yet by Marlon James. Again, I had mixed reviews, but that one still is sitting on my shelf. In 2020, again, I had a very big, um, most anticipated list. I loved Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. And that was great because I had never read anything by him before and it made my top books of the year. And that one was definitely a big win. Same for Death in Her Hands by Tessa Moshveg. I can't remember if I'd read my year of rest and relaxation at the point of making that anticipated video, but I definitely hadn't read much of her work and I ended up really loving that one. The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde and Fell by Sarah Moss both successes, but I had read work by them before. English Monsters was a book that I ended up really not enjoying. I was sucked into it because it was being sold as the new secret history, and I'm a sucker for things like that. Not as much now as I used to be because I have learned my lesson. It wasn't <laughs> like the secret history at all, and I didn't enjoy the writing, so I passed that one on to someone else. I still haven't read The Snow Collectors, the Yield or Beastry by Kei Ming Chang. And I should definitely get to some of those in this video. In 2021, Show Us Who You Are by Elle McNichol ended up being a favorite, as did Polly Barton's 50 Sounds. I was really pleased about that second one in particular because I'd never read anything by Polly before, though I had read books that she had translated. I didn't end up enjoying The Dangers of Smoking in Bed by Mariana Enriquez or Painting Time by Melissa Carangal. The second of those was perplexing because I had loved work by that author before, but this one was just a bit of a letdown for me. I haven't read Pilgrim Bell by Kavar Akbar, and I also haven't read From the Neck Up by Alia Whiteley. Both of those were in that anticipated video that year. Then, 
2022. There are still lots of books from that video that I haven't got to because that was only last year. But ones that I have got to and enjoyed were Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. I decided not to pick up The Odyssey by Lara Williams because I heard mixed reviews and I read Supper Club and enjoyed it but wasn't really super keen to get to her next book quickly. I didn't enjoy The Six Who Came to Dinner by Anne Youngson, which I reviewed in a reading vlog recently, which I'll link in the description box down below. And I've yet to read The Rapture by Jan Carson and Walking on Cowrie Shells, um, as well as many others, and I can't list them all in this video. Um, and then there are some books I have predicted I will love that are coming out in 2023, but they're not out yet, however one of them is, and that is Kirsty Logan's new book, which is now She Is Witch. And I thought maybe it would be a good idea to read that in this video, given that I started with predicting that I would love Kirsty Logan in my first ever most anticipated releases video. So I think I'll definitely pick up that one in this vlog. Okay, I feel like I've just word vomited a lot at you. But those are the lists of books that I have. My plan is to get to many of those most anticipated books that I haven't read yet, spanning as many years as possible. I'll also be interested to see if I have a more successful hit rate in the more recent most anticipated videos because that should reflect my current reading taste, whereas ones from eight years ago may not, but who knows? I don't know. We're gonna find out in this video. All right, so having said that, I'm gonna read lots of books. <laughs> What I'm actually going to do now is go for a walk and listen to a podcast because I need to catch up on the most recent episode of Books Unbound. So I am going to do that. It is so misty and frosty outside today. So I'm going to take you with me. Let's go for a walk. I'll insert footage of that here and then I'll come back and talk to you when I have read a bit of a book. I don't know which book that will be yet, but we'll find out soon. read a book and I guess what I'm doing in this video is working out whether these books that I hyped up were worth all of that hype because some of them as I said have been on my TBR for years and they've just been sitting there and they were my most anticipated releases and I just bigged them up so much in my head w was it worth it is my question so the book that I have read to begin with is this one here which is from the neck up by Alia Whiteley and this was one of my most anticipated releases just a couple of years ago so it's a more recent release and my success rate with her writing is quite hit and miss but I still always want to check out her books because when she is on it for me personally she's brilliant. The first book of hers I read was a novella called The Beauty, which is a post-apocalyptic book about a world where women are extinct, or at least they're now mushrooms, <laughs> and they uh, live underground and they sometimes emerge, and it's really creepy. And I prefer, as I have discovered over the years, I prefer her shorter form fiction because she has these really weird brazen ideas and I think that they work best in short form where she can be succinct and you can suspend your disbelief for, for that period of time. I have read some of her longer novels and I haven't enjoyed those as much so this is a short story collection and I was super excited to get to it obviously because it's in this video. I liked this book. I, I didn't love it and that's because there were some stories in here which didn't work for me but the ones that did work 
I really, really loved. My favourite, I think, was the second short story in the collection, which was called Many-Eyed Monster, I think. Yes, Many-Eyed Monsters. So that is a short story about a world where people accidentally create monsters on their bodies and they're really ashamed of them and they keep them secret. But then a character realises that her partner also creates these and it's a great exploration of shame. I love that. Other short stories in here reminded me of some of her novels, particularly Greensmith, which is a novel about the end of the world and climate crisis and a botanist who's trying to save all the plants by keeping seedlings in a greenhouse and then taking them into space. And it is epic in scope. Quite a few of the stories in here touch on climate crisis, end of the world, and botany. And I do think when she's looking at botany, particularly mushrooms, that is also where she shines. She's written a non-fiction book about mushrooms as well. And I just love that she's done that and also written The Beauty, which as I said, is a novel about a woman becoming mushrooms. So she can really do, do it all. If I had to compare this book to something else, I would compare it to Life Ceremonies by Siaka Murata, which I read towards the end of 2022. That one, there were only two stories in there that I loved, but I adored those stories. And I would recommend the book for those two stories alone. They were ones that were specifically focused on body horror. And Siaka Murata, like with Ali Whiteley, when she hits home for me, it is just brilliant. So if you enjoy Siaka Murata, specifically the body horror stuff, then I would recommend From the Neck Up. And I would very, very much recommend The Beauty, which remains my favorite book by her too. So it was it, it was a good start. It's, it's not like an amazing start. It's not one of my favorite books of the year, but I loved some of the stories and I appreciated this book as a whole. The next book I think I'm gonna pick up is Now She Is Witch by Kirstie Logan. As I said, it feels apt because I included her debut novel in my first ever most anticipated releases video. This is her new book, it just came out, and I think I'm gonna to listen to it on audio. I've made a mistake never listening to Kirstie's books on audio before. I don't know why I didn't think of that because she has the most amazing lyrical, folklore storytelling voice when she's reading because I've heard her read extracts before and it's going to be like listening to my pal just read her work to me and that sounds like a joy. I know that it is a novel about a woman called Lux who meets another woman called Else and they're trying to reach the north to find some witches I think. Anyway I'm going to start reading it and then I'll come back to you and talk to you about it when I uh actually have concrete things to say and I'm not just maybe partly misremembering a blurb. So I'll be right back. I'll be back in a few days. I've made some dough to make bagels and yesterday I did this and I think the yeast must have been old and it didn't rise which was very sad. So let's hope that the dough has risen today. It has, hooray. Excellent, okay. Um, I'm gonna make some bagels for lunch. I'll put the recipe in the description box down below. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba Ba-ba-ba-ba-ba 
folks, I have read two books. So let's start off with the one that I didn't get on with as well. So I read Pilgrim Bell by Kavar Akbar and I enjoyed this one, but I had absolutely adored Calling a Wolf a Wolf, which was his debut collection that came out in 2018. I'm sorry if you can hear Lola, she's whining. Lola, do you want to come say hi? Lola, come here. She's deeply concerned because she can see a cat across the street that she can't get to, isn't that right? It's a hard life, isn't it? Yeah. You gonna sit? You can just sit here. We'll see if she'll sit. So, as I was saying, I absolutely adored his debut collection, Calling a Wolf a Wolf. And I think for me, the poetry of his that I love the most is when he's writing about his parents. And that's what his debut collection was specifically about, primarily his relationship with his father. Um, so there's some of poetry that is a bit like that in here, but it's much wider in scope. That's often the case with, with second collections. Um, and I think that he's a brilliant poet, and I think there's lots to admire in this book. I just didn't love it as much as I had hoped to. The other book that I read was Now She Is Witch by Kirstie Logan. I mentioned this in the last clip and I said I was gonna check it out on audio and I'm so glad that I did because I absolutely loved the audio. I mean, the book is great, but I think I would primarily recommend the audio book because Kirstie narrates it so well. I don't want to say too much about this book but it's about a woman called Lux who finds herself alone in the woods. She's recently lost her mother and a woman called Else finds her and helps her escape from a group of men who've turned up to assault her. She's recently left a place called the Sanctuary where she was sent because people are suspicious of her because she's not married, she doesn't have children, people think that maybe she is a witch and Else says that she has to come on an adventure with her on a quest up north to avenge else to hurt a man who's hurt her in the past and they meet lots of different characters along the way. Primarily this is a book about the importance of stories, crafting your own stories, passing stories on through generation and correcting narratives. It's symbolised by a character called Saga, so story, and if you have a story then you can become something else and then if you can become something else you can reach the light or the Lux. The character of Lux reminded me of a character called Lux in Ali Smith's Wind Winter, who equally is a character who turns up to kind of disrupt narrative and storytelling and I thought that that was really wonderful. Each chapter is split into now she is something and it's an identity that society would like women to have, a box that they would like to force women into. I would recommend this for fans of, well, Kirstie Logan in general, but also for fans of The Sea Women by Chloe Timms and Bodies of Water by V.H. Leslie. If you've read either of those and enjoyed them, then I think that this would be your cup of tea two. All right, it is the weekend and Mr M and I are going to go for a walk. We are walking from Kew to Putney. Now, I have taken you on that walk before the other way round from Putney to Kew on the south side of the Thames. This time we're going to go on the north side of the Thames and I think it's going to be um, very different. I think we walk past the Taskmaster house actually, which excites me. may not excite you, it excites me. And it's super super misty and foggy this morning but that's supposed to lift later so let's hope that it does otherwise we're not going to be able to see much when we're out walking but I will insert footage of that here and I'll put the map in the description box down below if you want to see what route we took.
The walk that we went on was really lovely. Part of that stretch where the houses are right on the river, and those houses have boards on their front door, a couple of planks of wood as a protection against flooding, because I guess it must flood down there a lot. And then there's a whole road in Chiswick where the front gardens of these very expensive houses are across the road from the houses themselves. I'll insert a clip here so you can see it. And that just felt very bizarre, but also very cool. So yeah, it was a nice walk. And as I said, I'll link the map in the description box down below. Now you may be thinking, what am I doing with this? I decided to treat myself for my birthday. I had found a code for Freddie's flowers. Um, and I don't know if that code still works because it, it's not mine, it's just someone else's that I saw online. It's um, Amelia. So I'll put that in the description box down below. If it doesn't work anymore, I'm sorry. But I used that code, which meant that, well, I should tell you what it is first. Freddie's Flowers is a subscription flower service and you can get them delivered weekly or fortnightly. And I'm just gonna try it and then I'm probably going to stop after this free trial and maybe use them occasionally in the future because that, that's a lot of treating yourself to get flowers every two weeks uh, or, or weekly. So I decided to use this code which got me two boxes of flowers for half price. They're normally £25 so I got two boxes for £12.50 each plus this free vase which retails at £25. So essentially I paid £25 for things that retail for £75 and I thought that was a pretty good deal. So feel free to try that code. If not, I'm sure you can find other codes knocking around online. Anyway, I had a story. So I decided to treat myself for those two boxes for my birthday. And um, these are the box that the flowers come in. The flowers don't have your name on because everyone who's subscribed that week gets sent the same flowers so you can't choose them I guess they just go to the market and whichever flowers are in season that week and they have lots of they buy and then they make a bouquet and they send them out so they don't put names on any of the boxes they clearly just have a list the delivery guys of where they need to drop flowers off and they just leave them outside your front door so I got a text saying my flowers have been delivered a couple of weeks ago and I looked out the front door and my flowers were not there. And I thought, oh, maybe that's a mistake. And then it turned out they delivered them to another house on the road because I contacted them later and they sent me the delivery photo and it was not our house. So I went up the road to the right house and knocked and said, I'm really sorry, but I think you have some flowers of mine. And they were mortified because they thought, <laughs> they thought that the flowers were for them because it was one of their birthdays and they thought that they had been sent them by someone even though there was no note so they had assembled the flowers in the vase which had also arrived because it was a free vase and they were so thrilled with these flowers and they were so gutted that I had come to reclaim the flowers that I had bought and I honestly felt so terrible it felt like I was stealing flowers from this woman um, who I hadn't met before she's one of the few people on our street that I haven't said hello to you know passing by but now I've met her and um, yeah as I said I felt like I was stealing flowers from her I felt so bad that I even said oh, please just keep them please just keep them even though it was also my birthday and I had paid for them but I felt terrible anyway obviously she was like no please take your flowers that you have bought it's not a problem we shouldn't have opened them don't worry about it anyway they delivered the flowers to the right place today and I'm gonna assemble them so let's do that should we do a, um, what's the word? A time lapse. Let's do a time lapse. Aren't they pretty? They last really long as well. So the ones that I got two weeks ago, some of the flowers died, but some of them are still alive and I've put them in smaller vases. I'll do a cutaway so you can see. Anyway, I bought these myself, not sponsored, not ad, not gifted, nothing like that. I just thought it would be fun to um, put these together on camera and I'll show you them again in a couple of days once they've opened. Um, and yeah, I really like this company. I rate them. So yeah, if you can find a code somewhere of the one that I mentioned before doesn't work anymore, I highly recommend. They used to be London based only, but now I think they're all over the UK. All right, I'll come back to you to talk about books a bit later. Hi, 
just quickly checking in with you about books because I have read two more and I decided to read the very beginning of one that I was unsure of to see if I want it to stay on my shelf and I've decided that I do want it to stay on my shelf. So that, that book, let's start with that one, is Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marlon James. This is a big beast. I don't read much fantasy and I have thought about unhauling this before but I decided I would sit down and reread the very beginning and choose whether or not I want to keep it and I read the beginning and I really was sucked in by the opening pages so this one is going to stay on my shelf I'm not going to be reading it in this video but I do plan to read it in the future that's quite exciting because I would have been sad to have um found that I didn't particularly like the writing style because I have enjoyed Marlon James in the past just fantasy is a departure for him right now I have read two more books and I have talked about them in other places so I'm just going to briefly talk about them here the first one is briefly A Delicious Life by Nell Stevens I decided to film a day vlog where I read all of this in its entirety and took you on a walk to Richmond Park and showed you the deer there and all of that good stuff and I will link that video in the description box down below if you would like to go check it out but this is one of my most anticipated releases of 2022 and I loved this book. I could see this being on my favourite books of the year. I thought it was a delight. It's narrated from the point of view of a 14 year old ghost who's been dead for 300 years and falls in love with a living woman. If that doesn't intrigue you, I'm not sure what will. I listened to the audiobook narrated by L. Potts. L. Potts or L. Potter? I don't remember, but I talked about it in the other video and the narration was brilliant. Love this book very much. And then the other one that I have read is Alibami Adebayo's A Spell of Good Things, which I read to review for Toast this month. They're a clothing company. They also have a magazine and I write articles for them. And I enjoyed this one a lot too. I don't know if the article will be up by the time that this video does. It may go up a couple of days after. I'll link it in the description box down below when it's available. But briefly, I thought that this was a really interesting book because I loved her debut, which was called uh, Stay With Me, which was shortlisted for the Women's Prize in 2017, I think. Um, I th I'm pretty sure it was 2017. And this is her first book in six years. Second novels are kind of terrifying for authors because you had all the time in the world to write your first one and then you do not have all the time in the world to write the second one. But she has taken her time with this. And I did record a podcast with Ayabami a couple of years ago where we talked about that a couple of years ago. It was 2019. Anything that is pre, you know, pandemic is in my head is still just a couple of years ago. Okay, So this is a book about community. We're following two characters, Eniola, this is Eniola, and Wiraola. And Eniola doesn't have much money. He is trying to scrape together money to eat and to go to school. Whereas Wiraola is from a family who does have quite a lot of money. And like with in Stay With Me, her name's have weighted meanings so look up the meanings of names as you're reading this book because most of them relate to wealth in some form or another these characters i thought would collide and meet and that their lives would intertwine and they do but not in the way that i expected they kind of brush past each other on the page it's just things that they do outside of their immediate connection influence the other to a huge extent it took me quite a while to get into it because there are lots of characters you're following both of these families so there are lots of different people but once I was in I was definitely in it is a bit of a gender flipped play on Cinderella and also plays around with uh, Dickens Great Expectations as well if you read and enjoyed Chikosi Obiem as a Fisherman which was shortlisted for the Man Booker in 2015 I think that you would love this because this is also about siblings political corruption and folklore I thought it was great um so those are the books that I have read since I last talked with you it is another weekend I'm filming this video over the course of about five or six weeks I think it's going to be in the end so it's another weekend and Mr M and I are going to go for a walk in Epping Forest it's a bit bleak outside it's raining a bit but we're going to go for a walk anyway so come with us
Well, we had, for the most part, a nice walk in Epping Forest yesterday, but then we also nearly got mugged and it really put a dampener on the whole thing and also just really surprised me. I mean, I've been in situations like that before, especially when I worked in um, Ripping Yarns bookshop because it was an old bookshop and I was the only person who worked in there at any given time. So I often, well, not often, I occasionally found myself in uh, weird situations but yeah in the middle of Epping Forest and I was with Mr M who's six foot two like he's not a scary looking person but it's just an odd choice to be like right I'm gonna go up to this guy who is definitely so much taller than me <laughs> and um yeah I don't know it was very weird he came up to us and he just said um I need to call my phone from your phone and he either had a knife or he was trying to make us think that he had a knife because he was keeping his hands in his pockets and it, it looked like he was holding something and was like ready to draw it out and use it. I mean, obviously we would have just given him our phone, whatever, um, because a phone isn't worth, you know, dying for. But these two guys on bikes came up at that moment and we just flagged them down. We were like, hey, can we be your friends? And that completely threw this guy off and the men on the bikes were like, yeah, of course, no, yeah, we'll, we'll hang out with you for a bit. And the other guy just walked off. Um, yeah, it was so weird, in the middle of a forest. Um, odd. Odd, anyway, so that was yesterday. Um, apart from that, don't, don't let me stop you from going to Epping Forest, I'm sure that, that doesn't happen very often. Weird. Anyway, today, today, it's really sunny outside but at this time of year we still don't get sun in our garden and I have stripped the bed and I've washed the bed sheets and I'm trying to work out if it's worth hanging them up outside because I think it's still too cold I think it's about six degrees but the sun is very misleading and it's not in the back garden so it might be a waste of time anyway I might still try it and I would like to bake something today I bought this book last year which is a good day to bake and I follow Benjamin on Instagram but I've never made any of her recipes which is a travesty so I've been going through the recipes this morning just making myself very hungry you know and I've decided that I'm going to make this parsnip orange and ginger loaf which I'm assuming is going to be similar to a carrot cake um and yeah so that is my plan today I'm gonna make this and I will show it to you afterwards we'll see if it uh turns out well I'm always a bit nervous well not nervous nervous is the wrong word but I'm always a bit anxious about things tasting good if it's the first time that I've made them I tend to go back to the same recipes over and over again because I don't want to waste my time making something that I end up not liking but I can only find new stuff to like if I make new things. So yeah, let's try this and see if it's any good. I did make the decision to hang them outside and it may have been a mistake. And I'm also supervising the cooling of the cake because I think if I don't, the squirrels will come and eat it. And whilst I do love the squirrels, I don't want them to have my cake. This is the icing, which is just icing sugar and the juice of a couple of tangerines. And then on top of that, you put this which is caramelized parsnip slices they've been roasted with some maple syrup so all of these elements separately look really good let's put them together It's supposed to be dripping down the sides, so that's fine. I think I've made a bit too much icing. Actually, is there a, a, such a thing as too much icing? I made double the amount that you're supposed to, which is why it's pooling so much, but it's still gonna taste good, or at least I hope so. I hope it tastes good. This cake is incredible. I didn't have walnuts, which were supposed to go in it, but um, to compens compensate for that, I just added a little bit more flour. And then I also added some cinnamon, some nutmeg, and some allspice. It is incredible. It's amazing. I'm going to have to try and not eat all of it in one go. I very much recommend this. Hi, excuse the orange lighting, it is getting on for evening time and I don't have um, a reading update for you but I just wanted to pop on here and show you two things that arrived in the post today. Um, so firstly, 
Kieran, lovely Kieran Wilwood Hargrave and her husband Tom have had their little baby and I'm so thrilled for them. And I consider it my duty to purchase babies dungarees. You know, it's it's a cult, right? It's a cult. Anyway, I think these are the most adorable things and I just wanted to show them to you. Obviously, they're much too big um, for her now, but for when she is older, these are I guess six to 12 months, so she can wear them in the autumn, but they're corduroy and this ditzy floral print is just flipping adorable. So that arrived in the post today. I think I'm gonna try and make, well, not gonna try and make, gonna try and post um, that parsnip cake that I made the other day. Not the one I made the other day, I'm gonna make another one of it and post it along with the dungarees. I've never posted baking before, um, but I'm hoping that that is robust enough to be okay. If it gets a bit squished, it will still taste nice. Keep your fingers crossed for me. But then also this arrived in the post today. And this is from my friend, Rachel, who's someone that I have spoken to and found um, through the wonders of the internet. So Rachel is someone else who also has EEC syndrome and she's also been going through IVF and we've been talking a lot. And she made me this, which is just the loveliest. So she does quilting. And she made me this quilt and it's got books on it and it's the colour of my office, you know, yellow and green and pink. And it's just the loveliest thing. And I may have had a little cry when I opened the parcel. So, um, yeah, it made my heart happy. Anyway, that's the only update that I had to share with you. I'll come back when I have uh, bookish things to share this morning. Um, I had a hospital appointment and before that I met my agent Charlie for a walk along the river. Uh, it's the first time we've seen each other in three and a half years. And the Thames this morning looked like a ghost, just looked like a ghost. It was so misty, it was beautiful and eerie. So here is a little bit of footage of that and I'll see you again when I have reading news to report. you that it was ghostly and that kind of feels apt because the two books that I'm going to talk to you about now have ghostly elements as well so where should I start let's start here so I read The Raptures by Jan Carson this was a most anticipated release sorry this hair is tickling, tickling my nose a most anticipated release from early last year I think it was early 2022 I have read Jan Carson before I first came across her work when she was shortlisted for the BBC National Short Story Award and hers was my favorite from that shortlist that year and then I've read her short story collection The Last Resort which reminded me a lot of Sarah Waters Summer Water uh, Sarah Waters Mm -mm. Sarah Moss's Summer Water. In fact, I'm pretty sure that Sarah and Jan have since done events together because they acknowledge how well the themes in their books work together. Anyway, I have read her short stories before, never read a novel. This came out early 2022. It's following Hannah, who is um, a young girl in Northern Ireland during the times of the Troubles. She comes from a very religious family. Other people in her class are not religious and she's a bit of an outsider because her father won't let her do things that other kids are allowed to do. And then suddenly children in her class start getting sick and dying. No one knows what is going on. And after the first kid dies, a boy called Ross, I think he's the first one who dies, Ross appears to Hannah on the end of her bed and starts talking to her. If I was gonna be reductive about it and do book maths for you, I would say this is like Derry Girls meets The Sixth Sense, especially at the beginning. Overall, I enjoyed this book. It is whimsical, unusual, tense. I'm not sure that the ending and how everything came together fully satisfied me as a reader. I understand that this is a book that's kind of paralleling the troubles by having these sudden deaths of children as an extended metaphor and also showing how younger generations ultimately pay for things that their parents and older generations have done, the decisions that have come before them. And I thought that that was interesting, but I don't think it's as neat as that particular summary 
sounds so I liked it but I don't think that it's going to be one of my favorite books of the year I love her writing so much though I particularly love how she writes about family relationships and I will definitely read anything that she brings out in the future the other book that I have read since talking to you last was The Snow Collectors by Tina May Hall I have never read anything by Tina May Hall before so this is a more exciting I suppose most anticipated release because I was just basing it on the blurb and no prior experience with her work. This is a debut novel, I think she's written a collection of short stories before. This is a novel that follows a woman called Henna, she's living in what is called a northeastern village somewhere, it's covered in snow and she has lost her sister and her parents and she discovers a dead body in the woods. The beginning of this book is so similar to Death in Her Hands by Atessa Moshweg and is for quite a while that I found it very perplexing and bizarre, but they can't have influenced each other at all because they came out similar times. I love how that happens with books sometimes. It is just one of, one of those things. The beginning in particular is told in a series of vignettes and the narrative kind of collages over itself so she'll tell you part of a scene and then move on to something else and then she'll come back to part way through the scene she was talking about before and it builds up layer on layer and layer to reflect the snow that is falling around her and compacting on the ground the writing itself on a sentence based level is absolutely stunning and let me find you a bit that i've underlined yeah so this is just the kind of thing that i love in books if you read this and you watch my channel you would think that's something that Jenna would like because it is. Our parents made our gifts when we were children. No matter how we begged for plastic dolls and butane powered roller skates, one year they gave us each a small egg, pale blue wrapped in gold foil. We slept with the eggs balanced in the hollows of our throats to keep them warm. After three weeks, the shells cracked and tiny clockwork birds hopped out. Mine green, Claire's red. I fed mine worms until it stopped working, but Claire's kept hers in a matchbox lined with dry seaweed and it sang us to sleep every night for a year. Just, mm, it's my catnip. So Henna is trying to work out who this woman was who died. There was a note on her body, which is also quite similar to Death in Her Hands, which is about a woman who finds someone in the woods who she thinks is called Magda and there's a sign on her body and she's trying to work out which member of the local community murdered this person. It's also set in the snow. She also lives on her own in the woods with a dog, as does Henna. As I said, it is bizarre. So Henna is trying to work out who this woman was who died why she died, who killed her, what the note means. She's also thinking about the loss of her twin sister and her family. And she's also obsessed with the Franklin expedition, which was an Arctic exploration that uh, was lost, Franklin died, and then his wife, Jane, commissioned other expeditions to go and look for him. It is a book that is playing around very openly with gothic themes so we have very specific references to things like Rebecca, to Beauty and the Beast, to Bluebeard, to Jane Eyre and I enjoyed all of that. I thought that this book was wonderful. I do think it is playing with too many themes for one particular book especially one that is this short not everything comes together perfectly. I didn't really think that the stuff about her family and losing her family was particularly relevant. I understood that it helped her connect with the historical character of Jane who'd also lost her family, but it just felt like one too many things. And that is very common for a debut novel where us authors get excited and we think, right, I love all of these themes. I'm gonna put all of them inside these pages and just watch them explode. So again, I wanna read what Tina May Hall writes in the future because I think that the way that she writes is brilliant. And I imagine that in future books, there will be fewer themes to explore. That just tends to be what happens when you read author's work. So who would I recommend this book for? I would recommend it for fans of Death in Her Hands by Tesha Moshweg. I'd also recommend it for fans of The Archive of Alternate Endings by Lindsay Drager, which is a very fragmented book looking at different ways the Hansel and Gretel myth could occur over time, because there are definitely elements of that in here too. And I would particularly recommend it for fans of the Book Collector by Alice Thompson, which is another novel that plays around with Gothic themes, deliberately puts in references to famous Gothic no novels and has lots going on in a short period of time. I think that there is something really, really special about this book. I know I said that it was a little bit messy, but 
I kind of forgive that because sometimes you know you can read a book that is ticking every box but doesn't feel like it has enough soul to really sweep you off your feet this has a lot of soul and the writing is exquisite so yes I'm excited to see uh, what she brings out in the future. I have checked and she hasn't had anything out since this was published three years ago, um, but I may pick up her short story collection, which came out previous to that, if I can track down a copy too. All right, um, I think Mr. M and I are gonna go for a walk across Hampstead Heath to Primrose Hill. So I will insert some footage of that here and then I'll come back to you to chat to you about stats and the few remaining books that I am hoping to at least start in this video. And then I think we can wrap things up because I think this video is getting quite long. So if you're still here, thanks. I'm sorry if you can hear Mr. M making tea in the background. I just want to tell you uh, an anecdote that I, well it's not even an it is an anecdote. I want to tell you something that amused me. Um, so in Hampstead, there is a place called the Creperie. So they make crepes and they're run by, I think it's a French couple. I think they're a couple. Anyway, they've been there for decades and they are very beloved, um, but they have their food truck outside of a pub. And as far as I understand it, the pub hates that they are there because patrons from the pub will go get a crepe and then take it into the pub garden and then they don't buy as much pub food, or at least that's the argument anyway. So when we went past the creperie today, we realized that they had been moved a little bit up the road, I don't know, a couple of meters, and the pub has now opened their own creperie, which they put outside of their pub um, called the creperie. And now the French creperie has put this sign on the top which says the original big text the original creperie and now they're just side by side and the original french creperie had a huge queue as it always does dozens and dozens of people up the street and the pub's new creperie that they've just opened had no customers at all and i don't know i feel like richard curtis or somebody needs to make a film about this very ridiculous scenario whereby maybe one person from each creperie, you know, falls in love and they're able to sort out their differences and it's all fine. But honestly, what a ridiculous thing. That amused me quite a lot. Okay, so this video has been going on for ages and I feel like I haven't been as succinct as I normally would be because I've been filming it over the course of five or six weeks. So let's relate it back to the very beginning when I was talking about, are these books worth the hype and I've been reading lots of most anticipated releases from the past few years um, to get a few more off my shelves, not off my shelves because they're staying there unless I didn't like them, but a few more read essentially. And there are two more books, one that I have started reading and one that I'm about to start. So the first one is Walking on Carry Shelves by Nana Nequete and this is a short story collection that I've just started reading. I'm not going to finish it in this video, I'm going to keep reading it, I'll talk about it in a wrap up. This. I said it was a short story collection, didn't I? Yeah, it's really reminding me of Disha Filiar's short stories and I absolutely adore her short stories. The narrative voice in here is so strong. The characters are just leaping off the pages and I'm loving that a lot. And then the other one I haven't even started, but I've decided to listen to on audio. I've downloaded the audio and that is The Movement by Aisha Malik. I listened to her previous book, This Green and Pleasant Land on audiobook too, and also really loved it. So again, I'll be reading this in the coming months. I'll talk about it in a wrap up. But what I have done also, I have receipts, okay? I have gone through all of those videos that I talked about at the beginning, all of my most anticipated releases videos, and I have worked out, after this video, how many books from my most anticipated lists across the last eight years I have read, how many I have not read. Then out of the ones that I haven't read, how many I'm actually still interested in and how many I am not. After the ones I have read, how many I liked, 
how many I loved and how many I did not like. And then from this data, we can determine whether or not my most anticipated books on the whole are worth the hype and whether or not I am good at predicting what I'm going to enjoy. I don't think I'm going to talk you through each month because I think that's just maybe a bit too much data. So let me just talk to you about all of the data combined and then maybe I can highlight specific years that were particularly successful. All right, so overall, overall there were 201 books in my most anticipated releases videos over the last eight years and I have read 128 of those books, which is a rate of 64%. However, that leaves 73 books unread from those videos. And out of those, I'm only still interested in 36 of them. And it was a relief going through my videos and realizing the ones I'm no longer interested in are ones that I didn't end up buying or picking up in the first place. Because in the most anticipated releases videos, I'm talking about books before they come out. I often don't have copies of them yet. And then I hold back and I decide whether or not I'm going to buy them anyway. So I'm only still interested in 36 of them. So that's 36 books that I still need to read out of 201. So really, I have read a greater percentage because I'm discarding several of the books in those videos. So in reality, I've read 128 books out of 164 books, if you disregard the ones I'm no longer interested in, which is a rate of 78%. And that's higher than I thought it would be as for whether or not I enjoyed them, which is kind of the most important bit. I liked 59 of the books. I loved 32 of the books and I disliked 37 of the books, which means that it's a 71% success rate of liking or loving a book that I have been eagerly anticipating. But I suppose maybe liking is not enough because I'm saying that these are the ones that I am hoping are going to be some of my favourites. So if we're looking at just love success rate, like books that I adore, it's 32 out of 128, which is a success rate of 41%. That's still higher than I thought it would be, actually. I, I spoke about at the beginning of this video how I didn't think I had a great hit rate with most anticipated releases. 41%, yeah, okay, sure, it's less than 50%. But 71% for liking or loving is actually pretty good, and I am quite happy with that. And I'm particularly happy with how many I have ended up reading as I said, 78% of the books that were on my most anticipated releases. And that's including books from last year in 2022 as well. And we're only just into the beginning of 2023. So I haven't had a lot of time to read those ones yet. Let me highlight individual years for you. I think my most successful year for finding books that I really liked was 2016. So that was the second year that I did it. In that year, I had read 12 out of the 14 books that were on my most anticipated releases lists. And the two that I haven't got to, I am no longer interested in anyway. So effectively, I've read all of the ones I'm interested in. And out of those 12, I liked five, I loved six, and I only disliked one. So that's an amazing hit rate. Then in 2019, I read loads of the books, but had less success when it came to liking them. So I read 24 out of my 29 most anticipated releases, but I liked five, loved seven, and disliked nine. So that's not so good. So I still do have 36 books that were on my most anticipated releases list that I still need to get to. So I could do another one of these videos in the future if you would like that. As I said, I'm going to continue with the two that I haven't finished yet. And I will talk about those at some point in the future as well. I would love to know if you look ahead to books that aren't out yet, if you keep lists of most anticipated releases, um, how you keep track of them if you do, whether you hang back and see reviews from other people before you go ahead and purchase them, and what your success rate is like if you have kept track of that as well. 
Thank you so much for joining me for this slightly chaotic video that had a bit of everything in, I think. Um, if you are new to my channel and you would like to subscribe, that would be lovely. Please do join us here. And if you like my content and you would like to consider supporting me on Patreon, that would be very kind. Link to that is in the description box down below. Support on Patreon allows me to keep creating free content for everybody on here and also funds my time in making it accessible, creating captions and all of that stuff. Thank you so much. I hope that you're all doing okay and I will see you for another video next week. Sending love. Bye.